We play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew and Steve here from AnyWorkingMe.com and welcome to this series of videos, short series of videos, it's just a review. We're doing a White Scars review, that's what we're doing. And so Steve and I, <laughs> while we're actually filming this, right now Quirk and Dave are actually playing a game of, I believe, White Scars versus Orcs. Yep. It's going to be White Scars versus something, I know they were talking about White Scars versus Orcs. And so that is going to be available to our Vault members in the link in the video description below. So make sure you click on that after you watch this. Um, I think this is going to be a two-parter. I'm saying that right now. And we'll just we'll see where it goes. We're planning on it being a two-parter, but and then with each part, we'll have a battle report afterwards to cover the the new expansion to the White Scars that came in the Kalyan book. Kind of got overshadowed by the Tau release. <laughs> yeah. But um, they, the book has the White Scars and Raven Guard, and I love it. I love the way that they decided to supplement these. So more formations. More story. A new detachment. And multiple things at once, not just one thing coming out. Now they've done this before. They did it when they expanded on the, the Tyranids. It kind of seemed out of the blue and a weird mm -hmm. way to do it, because then they went back to doing things the way they were always doing it. Um, with the Shield of Bale expansion, they had like the Flesh Terrors, they had some Necron stuff yeah. that ended up being really awful. <laughs> yes, you're right. But it wasn't, to, it didn't, even though they had their own Warlord traits and even relics, it didn't feel the same as this. It's a small fraction of what this actually is. This feels bigger, even yes. though it's, but it's just four formations. It's not, and a detachment. And a, yeah, a detachment, but that, that's a lot, especially how they all kind of go together. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I'm saying, I, I know this, this feels different, definitely. It feels like a good, maybe it's because it's actually good. Whereas like the Tyranus stuff that came out. Well, formations at that time were just kind of starting. Yeah. Now they're a more uh, important thing. They're more using your formations more in your army, and now you have detachments of formations, which yeah. we have here, which is a big deal. And I, and I really like this direction because, uh, for example, we're doing the White Scars one here. We'll be doing a Raven Guard one as well. And then the next release that's coming out, well, when you're watching this coming out tomorrow, is the Montka book, which features the Farsight Enclaves and Imperial Guard. Yeah, that's going to be. As specifically, Cadia. So I, from everything I've read, essentially it's going to just be the same format where you keep your Astra Militarum Codex and you use them for references to all your units and rules, and then it gives you a whole new detachment. I'm so. super interested in that one. Well, th that's, that's exactly what we said. Didn't I yeah. say that before? I'm like, Astra Militarum are just boring. There's nothing yep. wrong with them. Give me some formations, just give me some weird... Give me a detachment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing, so they must have heard me. <laughs> I was saying it really loudly. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> There's, they, they're, they've... <laughs> They got a spy cam in, uh, in our office. In your corner office? Yeah, and so that, that's exactly what I wanted. Cards, tactical objectives. And you're getting it. That, that, like, like it's yeah. a point. I don't need a new codex for an army. Astra Militarum, sure, they're weak now, but they're weak because they don't have all the fancy formations and stuff. They, they can totally do it. So here we're going to talk about what <clears throat> got changed with the White Scars, how it brings it into uh, the regular Space Marine book, and that you do require the Space Marine book in order to play the White Scars, because this does not contain any unit information. It's just formations, detachments, warlord traits, relics, and new tactical objectives. And so, so it's very important. Actually, before we even go further, do the tactical objectives required if you play White Scars, even if you don't use the supplement? I want to say yes, but I have nothing to back that up. So let's let's quickly look at that. Tactical objectives. If your warlord is drawn from the White Scars, you, you must replace it with these. So this is a requirement. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of us missed the whole, you must use these tactical objectives cards when they came out. Yeah. Because I know I couldn't find the Necron cards. And then I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just use the regular ones. And then found out later. It's like, oh, you have like, to. No, you have to. I'm like, oh, yeah. It's, it says that. You, you, if you're playing Necrons, replace it with these. I, just, I had figured that you just could replace it with the, those. The little objectives that are specific to the armies are a little more fluffy, a little more fun, a little more interesting on the battlefield. What do you make you have to do? Some of, the, do? some of the armies, they're a nerf. And some yep. of them they're a buff. Like the Tau, the Tau ones are actually really good for the Tau. Whereas like the Necron ones were like getting the challenge. And I was like, what am the I wanting to do? The the, they're replacing uh, the it's eleven through sixteen, and they're replacing secure objective one through six. I would personally rather always have those. Yeah, I know, right? But so they're oh, all no, kind so of a nerf. The Tau ones were actually good for Tau. They're like kill something. Okay, you from your to, you from your deployment zone, kill something. You're like, okay. Oh, if I don't have to leave this place. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's what I was gonna do anyway. <laughs> so thanks. Whereas I found the other ones. They, they force you to play against the style, so the, the White Scars ones, will we'll have to kind of see how those work as well. But yeah, you do. So if you're playing a regular Space Marine Codex, you don't have the Kalyan book, and you decide to use the White Scars Chapter Doctrines, or Chapter Tactics, then the technically, cards. technically you need to use these cards. So you need to have the, the Kalyan book. Interesting. 
Unless, and I'm assuming the same goes for the Raven Guard as well. So, just a little... Uh, why don't we start there then? We're already talking right. about tactical objectives. This is probably the least interesting part, so let's, let's, let's get it over with. So these, of course, replace your first six. And so, um, we start with rapid redeployment. So you generate the tactical objective, or when it's generated, you choose an objective marker that is not within 18 inches of any friendly models. If you cannot, choose the marker that is furthest from any of your models. And then you get a victory point if you control that. Okay. Your bikes and stuff, so... You can get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely doable. No problem. Not that exciting. Run them down, get a victory point if at least one enemy unit was caught and destroyed by a sweeping advance. That's hard. Yeah, because what if you just kill them? Yeah, that's hard. Especially with all the new stuff we're going to be discussing about their extra hammer wraths and furious exactly. charge. Exactly. They're, they're <laughs> now, now I'm not going to want to shoot in hopes that you fail. I do enough wounds in combat hopes that you fail. Like that's I'm, I'm going to toss that card unless I get lucky and get it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not good. Yeah, that's a very circumstantial one. I don't like circumstantial ones. Exactly. I prefer the ones where it's like, even if it's challenged, like I drew the secure objective one that's right near deployment, at least that's not circumstantial. I can still try to do something about it. Mounted Assault, score a victory point at the end of your turn if at least one enemy unit was completely destroyed by a friendly bike unit during this turn. What if you don't have bikes? No, 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 if it's bikes, D3 instead. If at least three enemy units were completely destroyed by friendly bikes. Wait a second. Yeah, if you kill three, then you get D3. So you gotta have bikes. <clears throat> yeah, all that says is if you do three of them, you get D3. No, no, no. You, you don't kill enemy bikes. One of your no, bikes, no, no, you no, no. Kill... You. you yeah, would, yeah. But you might not have bikes. Oh, you're gonna have bikes. But there's like the whole core thing. You could you could build the army with the core that doesn't have bikes and then add on the, the scout formation. Then I say you're doing it wrong. With, you, <laughs> with, with your chapter tactics being Plus one to jinx so on your bike. You got you got to capital. You got to use that. Of course, or else use of a different, course. Use a different chapter tactic then. I, I I get it, but you might want to try something different. I don't like being forced to play my guys a certain way. I want to be able to be flexible. But I guess we're talking about a very specific chapter within the Space Marine Codex, so maybe I can forgive it. Yeah, I I, I'm, I love the bikes. Yeah. No, that, I don't get me wrong. That would be a problem for me. I love that one. Actually. Don't get me wrong. I love the bikes too. I'm just saying, what if? I guess you're throwing that one away. Or in our house rules, I guess you just get to toss it right away. Yeah, if you have no bugs, yeah. yeah. Uh, then you have in Thane Retreat, score one victory point at the end of your turn. If during your turn at least one friendly unit from White Scar's detachment breaks away from combat, it was locked in due to the hit and run I special I don't like rule. that at all. I don't want to hit and run on my turn. No, you hit and run in your opponent's turn. Right. Why would you, why would you like ever hit and run away from, unless you're like outmatched? No, I'm tossing that one. Goodbye. Well, I mean, I guess if there's one squad in combat that you can hit and run, they'll be relatively safe, and that squad's not going to do much to my turn. Like, it's too circumstantial on that one as well. Yeah. I'll do it for a point, but... Eh. Yeah. At, least, at least you can hit I'd run really have easily. I'd secure objective number four instead. Yeah. Clean kill, score victory point at the end of your turn if at least one enemy model that had three or more wounds at the start of the assault phase was slain during that phase. If it had five or more wounds at D3. So kill a character, kill a monster, basically. Yeah, so it's Monster Hunter, but it it's unwounded. only Assault. Yeah. So it, it's worse. It's, it's Assassinate, but worse. Yeah. And then Claim the Head. A force without a leader. Okay, it starts off with Fluff. <laughs> Score one victory point at the end of your turn if an, any enemy characters were killed in a challenge. Ah! I hate the ones that force you to challenge. Oh, okay. If your enemy war, if the enemy warlord is slain in a challenge, you get D3. If your warlord slew the enemy warlord in a challenge, Score D3, D3 plus, three. plus okay. three. See, that one I would try for. No, okay, they're not the worst. They're not so amazing. The first three are okay. The last three seem incredibly circumstantial. But you're yeah. forced to use them. Now, mind you, this is, you've got 36 tactical objectives, and we're talking about three of them we don't like. Because you could also draw things like Witch Hunter, or killing a monstrous creature, or like, like Monster Hunter, or something like that. Or, like, sorry, Big Game Hunter. And you, maybe that's too circumstantial for you as well because the opponent just has one rhino sitting in the back and now you have to go after that. So I think in the average game I pulled maybe two of these in the whole game. I don't know. The one time I played the Tau game I pulled five of them. Like almost the first really? five were almost all Tau ones. So. <clears throat> Fluffy. So, 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 uh, some of them can be fun. Yeah. I don't feel that these are super overpowered for them. They actually seem to nerf them a little bit. I'd yeah, others have it worse actually. But I mean others have it better too. So it's not that bad. But it's not that great. Okay. So that's the tactical objectives, what, nah. I, what I consider to be the boring part. So let's talk about, um, well, let's, let's talk about everything that's not included with the detachment. Our second video, we'll go over the new detachment. So we've got new warlord traits, 
like them. And we've got relics. Now the nice thing about the relics is you can mix and match. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. I don't know, don't know if any other um, codices do that. Where I you have yeah, I, I don't think that's abnormal. The Tyranids one, once again, is the one I'm really familiar with. I just, I'm, I'm more familiar with my Dark Elder one. I know I, I can't do that. I, I know that you can't take... Like, my Tyranids one wouldn't let me take the relic from the book if I wasn't using their detachment. But that detachment can take the relics from the Tyranid book. Hmm. So whereas this one, it basically says um, units in a White Scar's detachment. And so that could be a Gladius Strike yep. Force, it could be a Combined Arms Detachment, heck, it could be an Allied Detachment. That can normally take items from the Chapter Relics, can choose to take items from Relics of Cog Chagoras? Chagoras? Wait, wait, Chagoras? I can say this. Chagoras? Where'd it go? Right there. Oh. How do you say that? It's, it's Chagoras. Chagoras? Okay. At the point, Scott, you can take items from both lists in the Detachment. Pretty cool. Yeah. Because cool. then you might be able to find some good combos. So I kind of like most of these relics. Yeah, they're all... I can use any of them, actually. There's none I would never use. Yeah. And there's one uh, standard as well. So the Command Squad can take the one relic. The Banner of the Eagle. If you use a Command Squad, I'd probably take it. Well, we talked about this. Because you don't like Command Squads. I'm not a boo. Hey, everybody. Matthew and Steve here from AWorkingMe.com. And welcome to this series of videos. Short series of videos. It's just a review. We're doing a White Scars review. That's what we're doing. And so Steve and I, <laughs> while we're actually filming this, right now, Quirk and Dave are actually playing a game of, I believe, White Scars versus Orcs. Yep. It's going to be White Scars versus something. I know they were talking about White Scars versus Orcs. And so that is going to be available to our Vault members in the link in the video description below. So make sure you click on that after you watch this. Um, I think this is going to be a two-parter. I'm saying that right now. And we'll just, <laughs> we'll see where it goes. We're planning on it being a two-parter, but and then with each part, we'll have a battle report afterwards to cover the, the new expansion to the White Scars that came in the Kalyan book. Kind of got overshadowed by the Tau release. <laughs> yeah. But um, they, the book has the White Scars and Raven Guard, and I love it. I love the way that they decided to supplement these. So More formations, more story. A new detachment. And multiple things at once, not just one thing coming out. Now, they've done this before. They did it when they expanded on the, the Tyranids. It kind of seemed out of the blue in a weird mm -hmm. way to do it, because then they went back to doing things the way they were always doing it. Um, with the Shield of Bale expansion, they had like the Flesh Terrors, they had some Necron stuff yeah. that ended up being really awful. Yes, yeah, you're right. But it wasn't, to, it didn't, even though they had their own Warlord traits and even relics, it didn't feel the same as this. It's a small fraction of what this actually is. This feels bigger, even yes. though it's, but it's just four formations. It's not, and a detachment. Uh, yeah, a detachment, but that, that's a lot, especially how they all kind of go together. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I'm saying, I, I know this, this feels different, definitely. It feels like a good, maybe it's because it's actually good, whereas like the Tyranus stuff that came out. Well, formations at that time were just kind of starting. Yeah. Now they're more of an important thing. They're more using your formations more in your army, and now you have the attachments of formations, which yeah. we have here, which is a big deal. And I, and I really like this direction because, uh, for example, we're doing the White Scars one here. We'll be doing the Raven Guard one as well. And then the next release that's coming out, well, when you're watching this coming out tomorrow, is the Montka book, which features the Farsight Enclaves and Imperial Guard. Yeah, that's going to be. As specifically, Cadia. So I, from everything I've read, essentially it's going to just be the same format where you keep your Astra Militarum Codex and use them for references to all your units and rules, and then it gives you a whole new detachment. I'm so. super interested in that one. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly what we said. Didn't I yeah. say that before? I'm like, Astra Militarum are just boring. There's nothing yep. wrong with them. Give me some formations. Just give me some weird Give me a detachment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing. So they must have heard me. <laughs> I was saying it really loudly. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> There's, they, they're, they've... <laughs> They got a spy cam in, uh, in our in offices. In your corner office? Yeah, and so that, that's exactly what I wanted. Cards, tactical objectives. And you're getting it. That, that, like, like it's yeah. point. I don't need a new codex for an army. Astra Militarum, sure, they're weak now, but they're weak because they don't have all the fancy formations and stuff. They, they can totally do it. So here we're going to talk about what <clears throat> got changed with the White Scars, how it brings it into uh, the regular Space Marine book, and that you do require the Space Marine book in order to play the White Scars because this does not contain any unit information. It's just formations, detachments, warlord traits, relics, and new tactical objectives. So, so it's very important. Actually, before we even go further, do the tactical objectives required if you play White Scars, even if you don't use the supplement? I want to say yes, but I have nothing to back that up. So let's let's quickly look at that. Tactical objectives. If your warlord is drawn from the White Scars, you, you must replace it with these. So this is a requirement 
That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of us missed the whole you must use these Tactical Disc cards when they came out. Yeah, because I know they couldn't find the Necron cards. And then I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just use the regular ones. And then found it later. It's like, oh, you have like, to. No, you have to. I'm like, oh, yeah. It's, it says that. You, you, if you're playing Necrons, replace it with these. I, just, I had figured that you just could replace it with the, those. The little objectives that are specific to the armies are a little more fluffy, a little more fun, a little more interesting on the battlefield. What do you make you have to do? Or some, of the, to do? some of the armies, they're a nerf. And some yep. of them they're a buff. Like the Tau, the Tau ones are actually really good for the Tau. Whereas like the Necron ones were like getting a challenge and well, it's like, what am I wanting to do? The, the replacing uh, the it's eleven through sixteen and they're replacing secure objective one through six. I would personally rather always have those. Yeah, I know, right? But so they're oh, all no, kind so of a the, nerf. Tau, the Tau ones were actually good for Tau. They're like kill something. Okay, because you, you don't from want your to... deployment zone kill something. You're like, okay. Oh, if I don't have to leave this place, oh, yeah, good. Oh, yeah, that's what I was gonna <laughs> do anyway. So thanks. Whereas I found that other ones they, they force you to play against the style, so the, the White Scars ones, will we'll have to kind of see how those work as well. But yeah, you do. So if you're playing a regular Space Marine Codex, you don't have the Kalyan book, and you decide to use the White Scars Chapter Doctrines, or Chapter Tactics, then the technically, cards. technically you need to use these cards. So you need to have the, the Kalyan book. Interesting. And, that's, and I'm assuming the same goes for the Raven card as well. So, just a little... Uh, why don't we start there then? We're already talking okay. about tactical objectives. This is probably the least interesting part, so let's, let's, let's get it over with. So these, of course, replace your first six. And so um, we start with rapid redeployment. So you generate the tactical objective, or when it's generated, you choose an objective marker that is not within 18 inches of any friendly models. If you cannot, choose the marker that is furthest from any of your models, and then you get a victory point if you control that. Okay. Here are bikes and stuff, so. You can get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely you won't. No problem. Not that exciting. Run them down, get a victory point if at least one enemy unit was caught and destroyed by a sweeping advance. That's hard. Yeah, because what if you just kill them? Yeah, that's hard. Especially with all the new stuff we're going to be discussing about their extra hammer wrath and furious exactly. charge. Exactly. They're, they're <laughs> now, now I'm not going to want to shoot in hopes that you fail. I do enough wounds in combat in hopes that you fail. Like that's, I'm, I'm going to toss that card unless I get lucky and get it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not good. Yeah, that's a very circumstantial one. I don't like circumstantial ones. Exactly. I prefer the ones where it's like, even if it's a challenge, like I drew the secure objective one that's right in your deployment, at least that's not circumstantial. I can still try to do something about it. Mounted Assault, score a victory point at the end of your turn if at least one enemy unit was completely destroyed by a friendly bike unit during this turn. What if you don't have bikes? No, 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 if it's bikes, D3 instead. If at least three enemy units were completely destroyed by friendly bikes. Wait a second. Yeah, if you kill three, then you get D3. So you gotta have bikes. <clears throat> yeah, all that says is if you do three of them, then you get D3. No, no, no. It, you, you don't kill enemy bikes. One of your no, bikes. No, no, you no, no. Kill... You. you yeah, would, yeah. But you might not have bikes. Oh, you're gonna have bikes. But there's like the whole core thing. You could you could build the army with the core that doesn't have bikes and then add on the, the scout formation. Then I say you're doing it wrong. With you <laughs> with, with your chapter tactics being Plus one to jinx so he's on your bike. You got you got a cap. You got to use that. Of course, or else use of a course. Use a different chapter tactic then. I, I I get it, but you might want to try something different. I don't like being forced to play my guys a certain way. I want to be able to be flexible. But I guess we're talking about a very specific chapter within the Space Marine Codex, so maybe I can forgive it. Yeah, I I, I'm, I love the bikes. Yeah, that no, would, don't get me wrong. That would be a problem for me. I love that one. Actually. Don't get me wrong. I love the bikes too. I'm just saying, what if? I guess you're throwing that one away. Or in our house rules, I guess you just get to toss it right away. Yeah, if you have no bugs, yeah. yeah. Uh, then you have Thane Retreat, score one victory point at the end of your turn. If during your turn at least one friendly unit from White Scar's detachment breaks away from combat, it was locked in due to the hit and run I special I don't like rule. that at all. I don't want to hit and run on my turn. No, you hit and run on your opponent's turn. Right. Why would you, why would you like ever hit and run away from, unless you're like outmatched? No, I'm tossing that one. Goodbye. Well, I mean, I guess if there's one squad in combat that you can hit and run, they'll be relatively safe, and that squad's not going to do much to my turn. Like, it's too circumstantial on that one as well. I'll yeah. do it for a point, but... Eh. At, yeah. least, at least you can hit I'd run really easily. I'd rather have objective of number four instead. Yeah. Clean kill, score a victory point at the end of your turn if at least one enemy model that had three or more wounds at the start of the assault phase was slain during that phase. If it had five or more wounds at D3. So kill a character, kill a monster, basically. Yeah, so it's Monster Hunter, but it it's only wounded. assault. Yeah. So it, it's worse. It's, it's assassinate, but worse. Yeah. And then claim the head. A force without a leader. Okay, it starts out with fluff. <laughs> Score one victory point at the end of your turn if an, any enemy characters were killed in a challenge. Ah! 
I hate the ones that force you to challenge. Oh. If your enemy war, if the enemy warlord is slain in the challenge, you get D three. If your warlord slew the enemy warlord in the challenge, score D three plus okay, three. See that one, I would try for. Now, okay, they're not the worst. They're not so amazing. The first three are okay. The last three seem incredibly circumstantial. But yeah. you're forced to use them. Now, mind you, this is you've got thirty six tactical objectives, and we're talking about three of them we don't like, because you could also draw things like witch hunter or. Killing a monstrous creature, or like like monster hunter, or something like that, or sorry, big game hunter, and you maybe that's too circumstantial for you as well because the opponent just has one rhino sitting in the back, and now you have to go after that. So I think in the average game, I pulled maybe two of these in the whole game. I don't know. The one time I played the Tau game, I pulled five of them. Like almost the first really? five were almost all Tau ones. So <clears throat> fluffy. So so uh, something to be fun. Yeah, I don't feel that these are super overpowered for them. They actually seem to nerf them a little bit. Yeah, others have it worse, actually, but I mean, others have it better, too. So it's not that bad, but it's not that great. Okay, so that's the tactical objectives, nah. what, I, what I consider to be the boring part. So let's talk about, um, well, let's, let's talk about everything that's not included with the detachment. Our second video, we'll go over the new detachment. So we've got new Warlord traits. I like them. And we've got relics. And the nice thing about the relics is you can mix and match. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. I don't, don't know if any other... Um, Codices do that. Where you have yeah, I don't think it's abnormal. The Tyrion is one once again. It's the one I'm really familiar with. I just, I'm more familiar with my Dark Elder one. I know I, I can't do that. I, I know that you can't take... Like, my Tyrion is one wouldn't let me take the relic from the book if I wasn't using their detachment. But that detachment can take the relics from the Tyrion book. Hmm. So whereas this one, it basically says um, units in a White Scar's detachment. And so that could be a Gladius Strike yep. Force. could be a Combined Arms Detachment. Heck, it could be an Ally Detachment that can normally take items from the chapter relics, can choose to take items from relics of Cog Chagoras? Chagoras? Wait, wait, Chagoras? I can see this. Chagoras? Where'd it go? Right there. Oh. How do you say that? It's, it's Chagoras. Chagoras? Okay. At the points cost, you can take items from both lists in the detachment. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty Cause, cool. Because then you might be able to find some good combos. So basically, I kind of like most of these relics. Yeah, they're all... I can use any of them, actually. There's none I would never use. Yeah. And there's one uh, standard as well, so the command squad can take the one relic, the Banner of the Eagle. If you use a command squad, I'd probably take it. Well, we talked about this, because you don't like command squads. I'm not a big fan of them, no. But picture a command squad on a bike squad, or mm -hmm. all on bikes, uh, and you take the Banner of the Eagle, which gives all friendly white scars within 12 inches, fleet and furious charge. Does that not sound like an awesome idea? <sighs> Sounds like... Eldar to me. Yeah, no, it's they, good. They kind of play it's like good. Eldar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the command squads, and there are plenty of people who love them and use them. For, for me, in the way I play, the way I think, I think there are a lot of points for a squad that I can't get nearly as big as I want it to be. So I, I feel like it can be focused down relatively fast. Yeah. I'd rather have multiple cheaper regular squads. But you know, the banners actually, it might be, I actually would use that banner so you can see just playing, just to get that banner in, because having the entire army of bikes, fleet and furious charge, no, I'm not going to play with that at all. Yeah. So, like, when we look at the command squad, there's five veterans in it. Yep. You can't get any bigger. You yourself a medic, or uh, You can make one on the apothecary. Which is, you would have to do, I would think. Well, if, you think, if you're, you're going to be joining your captain to this as well, then you become a Death Star, which, if you're playing against Tau, <laughs> don't do don't that. Do that. <laughs> no Death Stars. Unless you can hide behind every building on the way up. That won't help. It won't help? Never mind. No. Too many uh, smart missiles. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you have one that can become the champion to get a power weapon and a combat shield. You get one that become an apothecary to give Fiona Pain to the squad. The entire squad may take bikes for only 35 additional points. So that's uh, seven points per guy. And then they can take melta bombs. They can take storm shields. So yeah, that gets really expensive. Yeah, of course. But it's, that's what a Death Star is, right? So... And then, and then one of them could take uh, the space. One veteran may take an item from the Space Marine Standards list, which <coughs> you can, of course, take the other one. Yeah. And so it's not, but you have to remember, it's not just about this small squad; it's about them buffing everything nearby. So you have the Space Marine Standard in the middle. And you have a squad of bikes on either side with Fleet and Furious Charge, mm -hmm. and so they all come in together and smash right into the enemy. The thing they, with that, though, is Furious Charge and when fleet. you're playing a, a okay, when I'm playing over Furious, when I'm playing a very mobile army with a lot of bikes or whatever. They're on objectives and they're on different parts of the board. I don't want my squads all close together to take advantage of that. 
I want to take advantage of my mobility. Yeah. I want to outmaneuver my opponent, not stay in kind of a brick and kind of fight just in the solid brick of everybody using the same special rule. Yeah. And that, that, that for me is the, the big, big deal there. Yeah, but when you combine it with the, the if you're using the detachment for the for Miss White Scar's detachment here, that not the combined arms or the Gladius Strike Force, but you combine it with the fact that they will get to reroll their hit and runs, that if they charge at least eight inches, which fleet will make it much more viable, yep. that they get to reroll their Hammer of Wraths. Oh, it's not bad. I mean, yeah, it's definitely not bad. It's just, it's just, and, and on top of that, yeah, I guess they get to turbo boost a little further, but you're not going to use that as much. But, and then you throw in the fact that if they're part of the certain formations, if they can get the extra Hammer of Wraths, yep. all of a sudden you're charging in there with Fleet, Hammer of Wrath, extra Hammer of Wraths, extra Strength, because they're White Scars, which we'll talk about in a second. And, and all of that, that can be, it's, it's a Death Star, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it can be pretty nasty. Especially if, I mean, they don't have to hit the same unit for that to work, too. You just hit that one, that one, and that one. You just want to keep them in a relative bubble of 24 inches, basically. Pull yeah. Pull side. Yeah. It's, it's doable. It's definitely It's not doable. your whole army. Yeah. It's just two bike squads yeah. plus a command squad. How much does that banner cost? Is it probably 30 points, I'm assuming? 30 points. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not It's not bad. Um, having a command squad on a bike, anyways, it, toughness five, uh, feel no pain. Um, I like that anyway. I don't know if I'm with the banner, though. Well, you know what? I, I would take it. Even if you're doing, if you're bringing the command just squad, the, its own unit. If you're bringing the command squad, you, you might as well banner. toss on that yeah. banner because you're already paying all the points for it for all those veterans. Then we've got the Glaive of Vengeance. <laughs> That's just a, it, it's one of those two-profile weapons, which it's a lance essentially. I normally don't like them, but this one doesn't seem bad at all. Yeah, because well, I mean, it, it's plus three trink on the charge. AP2. AP2. Yeah. AP2. And other than that, so you're looking at average strength 7 AP2 um, on the charge. And you get Furious Charge, you're instant killing Marines. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, helps that they have feel no pain. Yeah, it helped, yeah exactly. Helps them feel no pain. Instant kill Paladins. Yeah, we don't see them too often anymore. No. How kill them off the table. Yeah. And Necrons just don't die to them. <laughs> yeah. And then, and the nice thing is it's still Mastercrafted. And even if he didn't charge, he still have plus one strength AP3. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a nice power sword. So it's not overly expensive at 30 points at all. No, 30 points. When you, th when you consider who you're putting on, it'll be a captain, a chaplain, or a librarian, essentially. Yep. Is your, your choices for who will be carrying around this stuff. So, so not bad. Now, you, once you talk about this one, I think this one's the your favorite. The Hunter's Eye is absolutely my favorite. It's one that I'm, I would, if playing White Scars, I would auto-include in every list. It gives the, it's only 20 points, and it gives the bear plus, plus one ballistic skill. Not a big deal. Because usually captain is already yeah. plus skill five. Yeah. Not eight. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. You're about you to miss, you re roll on a six. Yay. Yay. And your chaplain and librarian will hit on twos instead of three. Yeah. He, but he gives himself, uh, ignores cover as long as, uh, as well as every other ranged weapon in this squad he joins. And that's very important to, because we, because we talked about this beforehand, the ranged weapons. Yeah. Not applying to psychic powers. Yeah. It's because we were looking at these, giving the like a, a librarian yeah. the psychic power, and all of a sudden he can ignore cover with his. Psychic Maelstrom or something like that from the other relic, which we'll talk about in a second. This but still, thing is an auto include no matter what style you're going to play. Well, how I'm would you, how would you okay. how would you include him? What, what, there, where do you think he'd be useful? There's there's two ways I'm bringing this. Bring, well, there's actually three ways. There's one he's sitting back with Devastator Squad with like last cans or missile launchers. So last cannon, missile launcher, Devastator Squad, all ignoring cover. This is where he's on foot, or he's on foot and he's joining a squad of Devastators with grav cannons and a drop pod. Or the last option is he's just on a bike on a squad of bikes with a couple of grav guns or a couple of plasma guns. And they're rapid firing, and they're just ignoring cover. Yeah. Either way, no matter what, put it in your army. It's good no matter what. Yeah, it seems like a. And, and these relics, there's no limit to how many you can bring per captain. There's Twenty just, points, so good. Yeah, and the plus one ballistic skill, nah. Yeah, yeah. It's if right. it's on a librarian or chaplain, that all of a sudden becomes sure. something that's because especially a librarian who has shooting, psychic shooting attacks. Mm -hmm. Having ballistic skill five would well, make what a difference. What works on his psychic shooting attack? This is. Oh no, range. it's just his ranged weapon. Does he get ignore cover? Or does it? No, and all his ranged weapons have the ignore cover special. Okay, those his But he gets a plus one blizzard skill though still. So that that would work for his psychic powers. Okay, so 20 points is a bargain for this. Even with all that plus one blizzard skill. Like this is such an auto include. Especially if you're going up against ghost kills. Oh, anything. <laughs> They're the worst. But the, skimmers that want to jank. Uh, tanks that want to hide 25% of their armor. There, there's no, like in every game this will come into effect. Yeah. Every Unless game. you don't like playing with cover. Well, if you're playing on table like this, they're just over across it, save the 20 points. Buy another missile launcher. <laughs> yeah, so so that's a really cool one. So, so far, three for three. Yep. Although, Hunter's Eye probably the, the best one so far that we've read. 
We've got an interesting one. Mantle of the Storm Seer for a Librarian. Gives him Adamantium Will. Nice. If he's a level 1 Psyker, he's going to be 4 plus Deny the Witch. And then with his Psychic Hood, he'll give, kind of give a bubble of that. And that's important. There's a yep. lot of Psychic going around in, in 40k. And then he gains the Psychic Maelstrom power from Telekinesis, and that's the one which is a Strength 10 AP1 Large Blast Barrage, 12 inches. Still put it on a bike and he'll be very mobile. And it's Warp Charge 3. So, but the nice thing is it doesn't disrupt his Psychic Focus. So if he takes all his powers from another Discipline, he, he can still, still get, get himself psychic. some prescience or whatever else yeah. he's going to want. And so it's Warp Charge 3 power, Strength 10 AP 1, uh, Large you know Blast what? Barrage. You know what, when, when, you, when, you can, when you're making your list and you can put a, take a Librarian, put him on a bike and know you're going to have this Psychic power, you don't have to roll for it, know you have it, I would take it on almost every list. Now, but it's still Warp Charge 3 though. So okay, uh, he gets he's starting off with one, probably two warp charges. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get at least three dice to do it. Yeah. And for what it is, strength ten, AP one, large blast barrage. Yeah. Um, it's if a, only it's a, it could combine with that ignore cover. Yeah, no, that's now, that, now that's what we love. It at. is barrage, so if the guys are behind cover, then you can kind of negate that. But it's more a lot of things are either ruins or they just kind of have stealth or shrouded or they're jinking. Bikes can tend can get can get him where he needs to be to use it. Yeah. Uh, to mitigate that a little bit, but it, it I I'm not a big fan of psychers, but I would take a librarian on a bike for this twenty just point to try upgrade because it it's, it's 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 really good. Strength and AP one big blast. Well, it costs you around that many points just to upgrade his psyker level to get access to another power. Five for the second one, yeah. Yeah, and so this yeah. one, if you want, if you like this power, and it gives him adamantium. Well, let's not forget about that too. So that's the plus one to deny the witch, and the fact that he has a psychic yeah. could remember that. He's bubbling that adamantium will around everybody else as well. I think he, you pay like ten points for adamantium will on upgrades for other things. So, I mean, yeah, it's, so it's, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. It's a good. It's a good. Uh, good relic. It's good. Yes, and once again, only twenty points. We're not talking about fifty point relics. Yeah. Here. Scimitar of the Great Khan. Very simple one. This is just another bargain power sword. It's cheap. It's a power sword with plus one strength and master crafted. It's not a power sword. But it's it like is. better than power sword. Well, better than plus power sword. Plus one strength sword. mastercrafted? Yeah. It's like not a power Plus one sword. strength, AP3, mastercrafted, and war blessed. When in the challenge, add 3D weapon skill. So yeah, you're not going to use that very often. You, that, ignore that. You might use it, you might not. And if you're mean, a captain, your weapon skill is 6 anyway. It's maybe nice for a chaplain, or heck, for a librarian, who don't have the highest weapon skill. Get yourself your charge of wounding on twos. It, it, is, it is literally 10 points more in a power sword. And you're getting plus one weapon skill and master or plus one strength and master crafting. Yeah, and it's, I, it's, I think it's, it's good. Bargain. I think it's good. It's just the plus three weapon skill is yeah. Do anything. You're, you have to be in a challenge, and you have to have a weapon skill equal to or slightly lower than your opponent, which is if, being, if, if you're a captain, that's if not the gonna character happen. needs plus three weapon, weapon skill to hit on a three, you're probably fighting something with two up armor, maybe. and you don't want to be fighting this, with this weapon. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, unless it's like a demon prince or something, in which case you get... Oh, Bloodthirster with his really high weapon skill, I guess. Yeah, because if you get plus three weapon skill, you're no longer going to be hitting on uh, fives. But maybe if you're... Once again, if your weapon skill is six, you wouldn't worry about that anyways. You put weapon on a character, it's still plus one strength, power sword. It's I think, that's, I think yeah. that's where it's good. That's all I'm trying to say, is I just don't think the War Blast will ever really no, be great. Yeah. And lastly, we have a Wrath of the Heavens war, uh, space, space Marine bike that... Jet, uh, turbo boost like a jet bike. Yeah. It's just a space marine bike, but when you turbo boost, you can turbo boost like a jet bike. And you can move 18 and you can... No, it's actually only 18 because turbo boost as a jet bike is 24. Oh, you're right. It's 18, but you can pass but over But you things. can go over things. I mean, at first glance, I'm, I looked at it, I'm like, ah, I would never waste 25 points on it. But you brought up a very good point. Bikes it's, are it's only points. It's only five points more than a bike. Yeah. So we regularly have a handful of points left over. Upgrade one character's bike to the Wrath of the Heavens is dead. Sure, you know, I might grab an objective for you, or I might give you domination. Yeah, who knows? It could be an objective grabbing thing. It could also be like protect your captain in the back, and then turbo boost him forward. Although if you're turbo boosting, you're not shooting. Oh, sorry, you're not because you could be shooting with the one formation. You're not uh, charging. It'll, I think it will really take effect in the game, but it, it could it could make a difference. It could make a helpful difference. <clears throat> I think it's more an objective grabber. Yeah, that's that's what it feels like to me. So out of all those, we got six relics. I'd say I really like at least three or four of them, I and all I, of them are viable. There, yeah, there isn't one I would say, nah, because usually when you do these reviews, there's always one like, yeah, yeah. don't bother with But they're them. all cheap. Yeah, they're cheap, they're good, 20, and 25. a couple of them are really, really good. Like, I love that Psychic one, and I love the Hunter's Eye. Yeah, I think the so Psychic good. one's my one of my least favorite ones. 
but I really enjoyed the, even just the plus one strength master crafted power sword one. Um, and then you can get the same. Oh, I closed it for some reason. Here we are. And um, then you have the Glaive of Vengeance, which is just five points more than that, which also gives you the plus one strength AP3 Mastercrafted, but then gives you the extra benefit that if you charge, you get plus three strength AP2. Yeah, I, I, would, I would choose that one over the other one. I would put that on my captain. <coughs> uh, so oh, and they're not specialist weapons. I want to point that out. <coughs> yes. So yes, if you have a pistol, still get the extra attack. It goes good on the captain because you can go ahead and on your bike, because I, I say he's going to be on a bike. I don't know if you agree, but I say he's always going to be on a bike. And he's going to charge a vehicle or a walker or charge a unit with a tough character who's trying to insta kill. Like I would think that's going to go on my character or my captain every time, or my chaplain. See, that's the nice thing. If you have a captain and a chaplain who are joining different squads, you can give one of them the scimitar and one of them the glaive. Yeah. So you, in both cases, for getting the charge, plus one strength, AP three master crafted. That's just for twenty five and thirty points. That seems nice. So they have the, it's basically they're doubling up on the same idea. Although the one, of course, gets the extra in the charge, the other one gets the extra in the challenge. <coughs> strength seven hitting the rear armor of a vehicle, he's gonna be able to do it on his own. They'll have him use a melt a bomb or have his squad help out. Yeah, I don't think if they're hitting rear armor of 10 or 11, they can usually punch that to death anyways or toss in their crack grenades. It'll be more useful against just hitting walkers and monstrous Soul creatures. Grinders and chariots and all those things. Monstrous creatures. Monstrous creatures, yeah. Most monstrous plenty creatures are of those three in up. the game now. Yeah. Plenty of those. Yeah, so that, that'll be really useful there. And I just want to point out, we're, we're going to go into our next video in just a minute, um, that you have to remember all these at the same time are all white scars. So they're all getting moved, if they're a bike, they get moved through cover plus one jink. And Big deal right there. Yeah, no, no dangerous train test when you're doing all of this. And on top of that, um, they also get, oh, what's the other one? Fight on the move, which is, that's the extra. It's D60 or, or Oh, no, it's hit and run, hit and run. Hit Sorry. And run. Duh, so that was a good one. Yeah, so everything gets hit and run. So a lot of these things, when you're thinking about it, they all have hit and run, and, they'll all, and they have plus one strength of their Hammer of Wrath, and, and getting moved through cover and plus one jink when they're on a bike is, is also really Mobile nice. Mobile resilient army for yeah. some reason. Yeah, when you combine it with these relics, it can really make a big difference. So you can you get your standard on there, you get fleet, you get furious charge, and you've already got hit and run, you've already got plus one strength, your hammer of wrath, you've already got move through cover, and it's just all, and you've got your frag grenades so that even charging through difficult terrain doesn't matter for your initiative. So you're definitely a get in their face, assault them, and take them down really quickly. Although, as we're gonna find out in the next video, there's other ways to play them, interestingly, yeah. which they I'm really changed what they with, brought in this with, with a new detachment. We're going to do that in the next review, but now you get to go and watch Dave and Quirk play a game of, I believe, White Scars versus Orcs, of course it's White yeah. Scars, and that'll be available to our Vault members at the link below. If you're not a Vault member, you can still click it, get a free seven-day trial, get instant access to the Mini Wargaming Vault, and that battle report, as well as thousands of others, hundreds of painting tutorials, and thousands of behind the scenes and all sorts of other stuff that we have in there. And it helps support us so that we can make videos like this. So go ahead and click the link below to go and watch that battle report right now and stay tuned for more reviews. Happy Wargaming.